for myself, the quarantine experience has like impacted my creativity uh, in so many ways. Um, it like, I would say definitely more positive than negative, but just like you said, um, that like we have, we're, we're left with this abundance of time. And for me too, like, uh, and for a lot of us, you know, especially like if you're in the tri-state area, which is where I'm, I'm in New York, Paula, what up New York? Um, but we're always busy. We're always moving. We're always, you know, we're, we're doing multiple things at once, whether you're a creative or not. And um, I deal with a lot of anxiety and anxiousness from that. And the quarantine for me, actually, in a weird way, even though although it brought anxiety it, in a different type of way, it, it actually like alleviated a lot of my anxiety. Like I didn't feel pressure. I didn't feel like I need to pick up the phone. I need to like we're worrying about our lives and our families here, you know, so like all that extra of like the rest of the world and the layers of like social construct and everything left. And I realized something about myself. Like I allow that to like mitigate my life sometimes, you know, and it gets in the way of my creativity. It, it does drive me a lot because, you know, the pressure helps pressure makes diamonds. So they say, and, and I do believe that, but at the same time, you know, sometimes it really clutters me and it really like holds me back. So with the quarantine, I was just able to like really take a step back and breathe and prioritize, you know, like, and then really like think about like what I want to do, you know, rather than like what needs to get done. Like, what do I want? What needs to get done first? You know, you need, you, you your needs are first, you know, your survival is first, but then uh, once that's taken care of, you can really like break it down. Like, am I, what am I doing in my life for me? You know, am I doing this because um, I have, I have, you know, I've set a commitment to someone and, and like, I promised them that I would do it. Or am I doing this because I actually am committed to myself and I really want to do it. And I think as creatives, like we all kind of like, you know, got reminded of that, that like we, we have an opportunity to do things for us, you know, and this is, this is where our drive really sets in. This is where your drive becomes you and you're like okay how hungry am i like am i going to use this time to relax and chill out and watch tv and catch up on netflix or am i going to use this time to create and uh either way like you know i feel like as long as you know what you're you what you're utilizing your time for it's good because some of us need a break you know some of us needed that setback some of us i did a little bit of both you know i did a little bit of like couch potato netflix and chill hang out with my family and my son you know um of course that's always important but you know i really took advantage of that time which i think that was first and foremost and that helped me to fuel my priorities so um yeah, it just really gave me like the balance of time. What am I doing with my time? There's like 178 hours in a week. I broke this down for myself a while ago. And, you know, let's say, you know, if you're an eight hour sleeper, which come on, most of us aren't. <laughs> but, you know, if you're an eight hour sleeper, that's like 56 hours right there. That's, you know, that that, that, that leaves you with a hundred and something hours left. Plus whatever time you're dedicated to your job, to your, you know, to your family and all that, like, we're really left with like a quarter of our time to do what we want, you know? So it's, it's really about like, you know, the expression like time is money is, is, is true, you know, because I, I don't, I don't really look at it as money. I look at it as wealth, you know, time is energy and time is wealth. So like how much time can you dedicate wisely to yourself where you're not draining yourself? So um, I'm still I'm still getting there, but like I think the quarantine really helped me map that out. I started a juicing company, so I do like fresh juice delivery services to local people in my area. Um, I know a few people with some some conditions and stuff, so like it started off kind of helping them out, and then like it branched out. The local paper got a hold of it, and then in between that. I, um, I was able to map out a proper plan for my music to excel for the rest of the, the year. Um, I wound up dropping an album, a little EP like that I was sitting on for a while, like three really dope songs that like I've had 
finished and completed and have been performing all last year. Like I was like, let me just drop this. Like so much stuff came out of it. Multiple collabs, like people were hitting me up like crazy, you know? And I feel like it was, it was funny because like before I kind of felt like I was in like a music drought or like music quicksands. Like it was either like so much work, where do I start? Or like, like, oh, what do I even do? You know, which way do I go? And it's just, it, it just gave, really gave me a chance to like, you know, hold up, wait a minute, let me get my head on straight, you know, and let me like really just take a breath. At first, um, I, I did feel like it was a, a, like finding my creative balance was a little bit of a struggle. Um, in the beginning, like, I guess the first couple of weeks while I was adapting to everything, it, it was a little difficult for me. Um, just because I'm such a routine person and, and I'm routine, but I'm not, you know, like I'm definitely like someone I'm always on the go and like, you never really can know what I'm doing. You know, only I know what I'm doing. Plans are always kind of changing. I'm ready to move. I'm ready to get it done. You know, um, I've always been a go-getter, you know? So like having multiple things on my plate or multiple jobs. So having that like pace, the pace of like constant and being a mother as well. So I'm like used to having my family, my husband, everything, and having multiple jobs, running intellectual entertainment, um, fueling my music, like doing all of that. And just like you said, you mentioned something that hit hit home with me too. Sometimes I can get buried in my music, you know, like I do use it for therapy, but sometimes also something that I've learned and I've kind of known for a little while, <clears throat> but the pandemic has pointed out to me is that like, I use this time, this like, I'm a go-getter, I'm a hustler to sometimes feel like I'm kind of like, n not purposely, but sometimes I feel like I'm running on a hamster wheel. You know, like I'm doing so much. What am I getting done? You know, I'm making all this music. Where am I putting it out? You know, and um, yeah, the in the beginning of the pandemic, the first couple of weeks, I got a little depressed. I got a little lazy. You know, I can I curse? I sat my ass on my couch. <laughs> you know, I ate my little snacks. I hung out with my son, you know, I, and I, I kind of like you know, I got sucked in for a little while and, you know, I got scared. I started worrying about everything and then reality set in on me and I realized like, you know, I'm human and I'm a survivor and we adapt to situations naturally. And sometimes it takes a little while. So I was like, you know, as I started to break things down, like, why do I feel like this? My whole routine changed, you know, so everything changed. So it's a culture shock. You know, it's like anything you pick up and go somewhere and you move, it's going to take time for you to kind of adapt and rebalance things. So as that happens, um, I started to get creative again. And I definitely like I definitely had to push myself also. You know what I mean? Like it wasn't like I was like, oh, OK, like as I started moving and motivating, things became a little bit more effortless and easy. But like. You know, I definitely had to to push myself and to drive <clears throat> to get up and to be like, well, oh, do I really want to do this today? And it's like, yes, half of me really wants to do it. The other half <clears throat> is stressed out and wants to, you know, sit and not think about things and, and, you know, and and avoid it. But, you know, pushing myself, the more I push myself, the more motivated I got then with all the, once I felt like I got into my zone and into my flow, then the protests started happening, you know? So you get used to the pandemic and the quarantine. And then all of a sudden, you know, then there's this rise of, you know, everything coming out in the media and you're seeing like a bunch of, you know, just, just, uh, you know, really <laughs> emotional stuff, you know, to, to be pulled from one direction to another. So it did pull me back from my creative work <clears throat> a little bit. But another thing that I accepted and also came to realize about myself was that like, I put a lot of pressure on myself as a creative that I have to, I have to get this done because I committed to myself. And I think part of um, just part of like being successful and like hitting your bullet points is accepting sometimes like things change. Like not necessarily to make commitments that we don't live up to, but like sometimes it's just unrealistic. Like sometimes you're putting more pressure on yourself to provide and get something done than you are to just like be in a moment and see what's going on in the world.
And this was like the, 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 all of the protests and everything in the quarantine. My mother's a nurse and she's older, so she's in the hospital every day. <clears throat> that stress wasn't going anywhere, you know? Like, I can't do anything about that. So there's only so much music and stuff I can make to make myself feel better. It's still temporary. At the end of the day, when I lay down and rest my head at night, I'm still thinking about this stuff. So it was a little bit, you know, it was a little challenging and everything, but you know, it did turn a light bulb on that. Like, I don't, I don't, I am a creator. I'm always the creator. Everything I'm doing is creating, you know? So I don't have to be in one box. I don't have to be putting out music all the time. I don't have to, you know, just because I have a date that a project is supposed to be dropped. If the date changes, like, so be it. It's in God's hands. You know, it's in God's hands. There are things that are more important than me, you know, is, is what I really, what I really realized. So, you know, our responsibilities are important, but sometimes like we get so selfishly involved that we, we, we turn off the rest of the world. So this was really a chance for us to, um, to come together in solidarity and, like realize, you know, everything that has been going on and, and take a moment and put everything aside and just breathe and, you know, do our best to try to put a foot forward and how we can make a change or how I can reassess my music to make my music better so my music can make the change, you know? So, yeah, it was challenging. It was challenging. But, you know, I learned a lot and I think we all got thicker skin from it.